All right. Well, praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are to rejoice and be glad in it. What a joy, what a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord one more time, just to lift him up, just to honor him. Is there anybody that realizes that the Lord is worthy to be praised? And if you know he's worthy to be praised, then you ought to lift him up, you ought to honor him, you ought to do everything within your power to make sure that God gets the glory uh, in this season. Well, we're a little different today. We are here and we are in worship. Remember, whatever we're doing in this season, whatever we're doing in this time, uh, it is our worship. This is our worship service. And um, we are just a little bit different today in as much as um, it happens. We're living in this in this pandemic day. We're living within um, the days of COVID and trying our best to, um, you know, situate ourselves and survive in the midst of these days. And we're doing that to the best of our ability. And um, come to find out that, you know, just last week, um, last Sunday, uh, one of our persons in our church tested positive for uh, COVID, but uh, we're grateful that they are they're just fine and everything is uh, wonderful for them. They're coming out of it just fine. And a matter of fact, their spouse um, uh, tested negative uh, twice. And so, um, you know, that's that one individual uh, that we may have you know, and that one individual is very, very, very precautious in all of their presentations. And so, you know, that one individual may have gotten in touch with, you know, some of the rest of us that were at our actual chapel last week. And uh, all this week, we've let everybody know, you know, what the deal was and get everybody to take tests. And all of the tests that we're hearing are coming back negative and uh, everybody's coming out fine. And so we're in good shape. But it was the uh, it was to the best uh, for us, according to, you know, uh, some of the leaders of our church and, you know, individuals that are connected to us um, that, you know, we would not gather there today that we'll we'll take a little time to self quarantine, you know, to calm down the place and uh, not have any activity in there. It's, in, it's been thoroughly uh, sterilized and cleaned and so forth. And uh, so we're just going to let it sit there and uh, not bother it, you know, and we'll come back again next week. But for this week, we're not going to uh, assemble or gather uh, in in uh, our chapel or at our space there at the corner of uh, 11th and MLK here in Panama City. But uh, we will uh, be back next time, next week. So this week, we're going to do it this way. I know it looks like I'm up in the balcony, don't it? it look like I'm in the balcony in our church. Uh, but that's just, that's a picture. I, I use this for one of our uh, panel uh, discussions. I use this for one of one of our presentations in Zoom somewhere. And uh, one of the guys called me and said, man, the church looking good. You were sitting up in the church and everything was good. I was like, man, there ain't no church. That's, that's, the, that's the picture of the church. <laughs> Uh, but but you can see and and you know this is this is kind of going to help some of us today because you can see some of the progress of what's going on next door uh, at our facility, our main sanctuary, and how we are coming uh, with putting it back together. God is doing a great thing. He's doing a wonderful thing. We give Him the honor and the praise for it. So. I said all of that to say that we're going to carry out church. I still got a word. We still got our young people are ready. Uh, they're in the waiting room and, um, you know, we are ready for black history presentation and all of that. We still going to have church. Smile at somebody, look at somebody. If you got somebody around you and tell them this is the day the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice. The devil is not going to steal our joy. You know, one of one of the things and and, you know, and y'all pray for me as a pastor because it is hard. It is difficult trying to navigate 
uh, the church through these seasons that we are going through right now. It is hard on a pastor just to try to keep a congregation together, you know, because I was actually to the point, I was, I was, you know, kind of tossing it around all this week on if we were going to go to church today, we're going to go to the building, or if we were not going to go to the building. And, um, you know, finally, you know, I had some people to call me uh, as late as yesterday and say, well, what are we going to do about, you know, what are we going to do about tomorrow? What are we going to do about Sunday? And, you know, we, you know, we finally got to the conclusion and said, okay, we're not going up there, you know. But then I thought about that thing afterwards and I was like, man, you know, everybody been going everywhere else they want to go. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult where we are right now. To, 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 to stand and be the church, to continue to be the church. Because, you know, we, we, everybody's deciding and say, well, you know, we ain't going to have church, but we're going there where else. We're doing everything else. We're going in where else we want to go and, 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 and interacting with, you know, and putting on our protective gear and interacting with everybody else we want to interact with. But when it comes to church, there's no thought in our mind, you know, that we're going to go up there. No, we're not going to do it. No, we had, we had one individual visual to test pods. No, we're not going, we're not going to do it. You know, and I'm, I'm just, I'm afraid y'all, y'all pray for me as a pastor, because I'm mighty afraid. You know, they, we were talking about it last night. I was on a panel. Some of you all caught um, the black church panel that I was on uh, last night with some other pastors. And, um, you know, they were talking and, you know, talking about how the church, you know, one, one even exclaimed that the church is better now because of of, you know, we just, the only thing that was taken away from us was just gathering. And, and uh, you know, everything else that the church is, is still alive and well, and money is up. And I told y'all, I don't have that testimony about, you know, the money going up in the church and, uh, you know, everything just going, you know, we've, we've had to deal with some changes, but their presentation was as if, uh, you know, we were assuming that everybody is spiritual, you know, that everybody loves the church, everybody is committed to church, everybody, and that's not true, you know, um, I pastor some people, you know, and I thank God for my people, I thank God for the joyous St. John Baptist Church, love all of you all, but I've got some people who are really good people, but not necessarily godly people, you know, and it doesn't bother them one bit that we're not having church. It doesn't bother them one bit that we're not coming together. It doesn't, doesn't bother, you know, some folk one bit that we cannot assemble together. How do I know? Because, you know, they're, they're, they're not, they're not frazzled at all, uh, that we can assemble as a church and they don't come to the, to the opportunities that we had. You know, there's some people that we have not had any interaction with. They don't come to worship. They're not here at noon uh, for all of this work that we present and, 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 and try our best to keep on uh, bringing our people into the place of God so that we might be able to worship God. Some folk can't do that, you know, and I'm, I'm mighty afraid, you know, I'm scared to death that we're losing a lot of our people, a lot of our seniors, you know, some seniors, won't even have anything to do with this. They don't want to have nothing to do with that technology. They ain't studying technology. And, you know, I get the word that some of our people are assembling and going to other churches that are, that are back meeting in their buildings. And, uh, you know, they, they can't come to our church. So they go over there to their church. Now they want to participate in everything that's going on over there, you know? And so I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, a lot of our, our seniors, um, we're not actually getting to simply because they just chose, they just decide they don't want to have nothing to do with modern technology. And I'm not afraid that some of our young people, you know, the youth, you know, they're not particular about trying to come in because they weren't particular. If you think of back before the pandemic, a lot of individuals were not coming to church in a way. They weren't particular with what church was. And so they're not trying to watch it on here. They'll watch everything else, look at everything else. And you know, it's a it's a really difficult uh, time that we are in, but we're still going to press through. That was one of the points that I made last night. Uh, no, yesterday morning at the One Church, One Child uh, gathering that you just, you know, when you know what you're supposed to do, you just have to keep on doing it. You just have to keep on going. And, you know, everybody's not going to be pleased. Everybody's not going to be happy. Everybody's not going to, you know, enjoy your efforts 
Um, but when you know what the Lord has told you to do, you press your way on through. You just keep on going, just make it happen. And I wanna encourage all of our joys. I wanna encourage everybody that's connected to our church, just make it happen. Just keep on going, keep on doing it uh, and watch God get his glory out of it. It's not about us being seen. It's not about you know us getting any glory. It's not about somebody patting us on the back, but it is about God getting all of the glory in the midst of our lives. To God be the glory. All right. All right. So, so we're here and uh, we're thankful for being here and we're going to give God the praise to the best of our ability. All right. Um, I've got some folk in the, in the, in the waiting room. I'm going to let them in. And uh, uh, little sister Munford is going to uh, present today in our, um, uh, in our black history moment. Um, she's going to be presenting today and uh, we're going to listen to what our young people, thank God for our director of our young people, uh, Ms. Sheila Cox, Ms. Shea Cox. Thank God for her and making sure that every February for the past several years, I don't know how many years we've been doing it now, but every Sunday in February, our young people gives us a presentation for black history. And uh, even though we had to deal with it on this level, I'm grateful that we're still going to do it. To God be the glory. All right. So we're going to do it a little bit different today, though. We're going to ask you to prepare yourselves to receive and uh, participate <clears throat> within our uh, National Negro Anthem. And then we're going to um, we're going to hear our moment <clears throat> in black history. Okay. We're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to get that. And then we're going to receive our moment in black history. All right. To God be the glory for the great thing he has done and what he is doing. Okay. All right. So um, rise wherever you are and prepare to uh, lift your voice and sing today to the glory of God, and then we will press our way through.
All right, on you. Unmute yourself. Sorry. <laughs> um, good afternoon, St. John. I will be giving a Black history presentation. When it comes to Black families and identity, I am reminded of the unique set of traditions that we share. While, <laughs> while many of our traditions are tied to our African-American heritage, African-American lives have been shaped by the reality of living in this country that we have inhabited as early as the 1600s. Over hundreds of years, the blending of African and European practices have birthed a new nation of people. We who represent the Black family in North America have historical backgrounds as various as there are conditions. Yet we have consistently shared a similar image and ties to ancestry and traditions that somehow transcend our individualism to make us undeniably family. Our identity is heard in our communication. It dominates in recreation. It stands out in society and makes educational advances that modernizes entire civilization. It is soulful, strong, colorful, and spiritual. It sings and dances and worships in ways that others try to capture or recreate, but just can't get right. It's our heritage and our identity. With the spotlight on Black family, I want to share this poem written by Maya Angelou. She was an American author, actress, screenwriter, dancer, poet, and civil rights activist. Best known for her 1969 memoir, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, which made liter literary history as the first nonfiction bestseller by an African-American woman. Angela received several honors throughout her career, including two NAACP Image Awards in the Outstanding Literary Work nonfiction category in 2005 and 2009. This poem by Maya Angelou is titled, The Black Family Pledge. The Black Family Pledge. Because we have forgotten our ancestors, our children no longer give us honor. Because we have lost the path our ancestors cleared, kneeling in perilous undergrowth, our children cannot find their way. Because we have banished the God of our ancestors, our children cannot pray. Because the old wails of our ancestors have faded beyond our hearing, our children cannot hear us crying. Because we have abandoned our wisdom of mothering and fathering, our befuddled children give birth to children they neither want nor understand. Because we have forgotten how to love, the adversary is within our gate and holds us up to the mirror of the world shouting, regard the loveless. Therefore, we pledge to bind ourselves to one another, to embrace our lowliest, to keep company with our long, loneliest, to educate our illiterate, to feed our starving, to clothe our ragged, to do all good things, knowing that we are more than keepers of our brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters. In honor of those who toiled and implored God with golden tongues and in gratitude to the same God who brought us out of hopeless desolation, we make this pledge by my Angelou. I have given my Black history presentation. Thank you so much, dear. <laughs> Thank you.
To God be the glory. Thank God for all that has been done uh, thus far in remembering our heritage and where it is that we came from and uh, having an example to go forward. We give God the praise. We give God the glory and we give God the honor for doing all things well. And he's doing it well, even right now. And we thank him for it. Thank you again. Little, that's my little sweetheart, Miss Tierra uh, from Mumford. We thank God for, for you and your contribution uh, today to, <clears throat> to our worship experience and our Black History Moment. To God, <clears throat> to God be the glory. All right. We're moving within our worship now. And uh, if there are any uh, prayer requests, uh, we ask that you would start to put those in as we press towards uh, prayer. Oftentimes, you know, when I'm given the privilege to do a virtual service, uh, I will uh, I will invite folk from all over the country to come in and participate. And so today, uh, y'all know I have a favorite prayer uh, that I like to listen to and I like to play when I'm in this type of an arena. And I won't do that today as we are praying for um, all of our uh, people, all of those who uh, need prayer, all of those who want prayer. Uh, we are praying for each and every one of you, praying for all of those who are battling with COVID and COVID circumstances with individuals that you love and are near and dear with. We're praying with all of you. Um, we're praying for those who have other sicknesses. We're, we're, we're still finding out that there are sicknesses and uh, their deaths that have nothing to do with coronavirus, nothing to do with COVID. And, um, you know, we, I think our focus so much is on this COVID season that we actually forget about cancer. We forget about AIDS and we forget about all of these other things that we are in dealing with. We forget about poverty. We forget about, um, we forget about the flu. You know, we forget about a lot of stuff that individuals are still having to deal with. And we're praying for all of those persons who are dealing with any type of sickness, any type of disease, dis-ease, praying for folk who have to deal with all sorts of circumstances, the changes in circumstances. A lot of us are under financial duress because of um, where we are in the pandemic praying for those individuals that your financial breakthrough will come. Um, that, that is still, that's not, that's not just popular preaching and proper, popular prophecy. We are still declaring that in the lives of our people uh, that you will flourish within the land. This is a flourishing February and we are flourishing uh, within the land and we will be blessed. We will prosper. We will be in good health. We're praying for all of those persons who needs attention towards that, praying for the brothers of Ms. Carolyn Yon, um, uh, James and Herman. We're praying for the uncle of our uh, sister-in-law. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's Wendy Edwards, uh, praying for her uncle, praying for the Wilson boys, of course, as we do weekly. Thank you, Shay. Um, we are still praying for them, Amy and Carrie, who are battling COVID, praying for those children in foster care, up for adoption. We're praying for uh, all of those single parents. Uh, you got it. Y'all keep on with your prayer requests. They are coming. I see them. All right. Frontline workers um, praying for well, the daughter and the granddaughter of Sarah Cox. Yep. We are praying for them, praying for Tracy, uh huh. Um, praying for, uh, yeah, praying for your mental health, Pastor. Thank you so much. Oh, that's that's for real. Yeah, I have. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Miss Jewel. Um, we're praying for, yeah, pray because it's 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 rough, it's difficult, but uh, keep your prayer requests coming. And um, those of us that are 
uh, watching today, uh, be mindful of all of these prayer requests that are coming. Um, yeah, praying for these young people going off to college. Yeah, I see that Star Jones. We are praying uh, for them because they're going out to uh, this world individual. I know uh, individuals close to me that went to college this year when they, were, they weren't even at college a, a month and contracted COVID um, when they first got there as a freshman in college. So yeah, we're praying uh, that God would cover all of our children um, heart transplant, I see it, Dickens and Baker, all of these persons, we are praying for all of these situations, all of these conditions, we're praying for each and every one of you that you might be able to see the hand and the power of God in the days that we are living in right now. I, I need you to encourage somebody around you uh, and tell them that God is still answering prayer. God can still work it out. Don't you give up. Don't you dare give up. All right, Minister Nikki, I see you. You and Joseph, we're praying for you all. Uh, uh, don't, don't you dare give up. Don't you dare cower out. Don't you dare turn around. Don't you dare neglect the power of God uh, within our lives and the power of God in the season that we are in. God is still able. Come on, y'all say it with me. God is still able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think. And I'm still trusting him to do it all. So let's go to God in prayer today. We're going to God in prayer with the, the late pastor, Apostle R.D. Hinton out of Chicago, Illinois. Um, we're going to allow him to come posthumously and, and bless our hearts and pray uh, and carry our cares unto the Lord. Care, cast your cares upon him because the Lord certainly cares for each and every one of us. Let's go to God and pray together. Our Father and our God, we want to pause this evening to thank you. Number one, because your ears are ever open to the cries of the righteous. We want to also thank you because the devil is a defeated foe. We thank you because you've caused us to triumph in thee. We want to thank you because it's not in vain to serve you. And in spite of how the enemy will paint all kind of pictures, we thank you because you're our stronghold in the day of trouble. We thank you because you have a listening ear to hear the cries of the righteous. And oh God, as we look to thee today, we want to thank you for one more day. We want to thank you for the tedious way. For many started with us along the way, but tonight they're sleeping in a cold, cold place. We want to thank you for lifting the prickly threads of our lives and permitting our golden moments to roll on. Not dealing with us according to our foolishness, our slowfulness and our sins, but dealing with us according to your grace and mercy. We honor you for bringing us the way you did. We're not here because we were so good. We're not here because we were so careful. But we're here because you were merciful. And oh God, you were mindful. You brought us all of the way. Our souls look back and wonder how we made it this far. But it was you, Jesus, that brought us all of the way. It was you, Jesus, that took our birth and left us with a song you cooled our scorching fever you grabbed us by the handle of our mind you guided our faltering footsteps you took our trembling hands you didn't turn us over to the will of the enemy but you made up our bed in sickness you've been our God of purity and peace you've been our God of life and freedom you've been our God of comfort and joy From the fatness of the land, you fed us. And a mansion in the sky, you're going to need 
this and you bought a high places down. Nobody, nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. It's been a long day. It's been a long night. But Jesus, you said in your word that weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. We want to thank you for just being our rock, our sword and shield for healing us when we got sick. When the doctors took off the stethoscope, when the doctors let down the bed and drew the screen, when the doctors said it's a matter of time, when man said die, you said live on. Nobody, nobody but you, Lord. Wonderful Savior. Now, kind Savior, we've got a sick list here. They're sick, suffering, and dying. They're shut in and shut out. But knowing you as I do, you're a prayer answering God. Your ears are ever open to the cries of the righteous. Oh, oh, oh Lord, touch right now. You don't have to go nowhere. You're already there. Jesus, my Savior, my friend and God. Have your way tonight. Stretch out your hands. Your hands of mercy. Your hands of grace. Your hands of healing. Your hands of salvation. Charge the atmosphere. Let an angel of thy presence come in the room tonight. Yes, let your Shekinah glory be revealed. Pour out on us, pour out on us everywhere. The all of our help must come from thee. Hear thou from heaven. Hear thou from heaven. Forgive the sin. Rise from your dwelling place. In Jesus' name, send the rain. The Holy Ghost rain. The latter rain. Yeah. Yes. Send the rain. For your glory, Lord. Give another baptizing. Give another filling. Another refreshing. A new anointing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh.
Indeed, everything that I am and everything that I try my best to be, I give it to God. I surrender to him. I surrender to his will. I surrender to his way. I surrender to his authority in the midst of my life. I realize that the God that I serve is worthy of it. And I make a vow to love him to the best of my ability, try my best to serve him to the best of my ability. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Uh, I thank God. I thank God. He is an awesome God. He's a worthy God. He's a wonderful God. And we lift him up in this moment today. We want to continue in our preaching series for the few minutes that we have left together. I want to continue with another installment to these major messages from the minor prophets as we've been doing since the second Sunday of this year, second Sunday in January, with the intent to visit all 12 minor prophets. Um, in the course of the 12 months of this year, uh, last month in dealing with Hosea, this month dealing with the book of Joel. We've given two installments there already. We want to continue in Joel chapter number two and find another message that the Lord would speak unto us in a major way concerning these minor prophets. Joel chapter number two. And in verses and last verses of that chapter, uh, you'll find these words. And of course, I am teaching and preaching to the best of my ability. Um, all of the context around the text uh, so that we might be able to gain understanding of the text. Um, but we want to bring the meat of the message I assume, out of verse number 28 uh, through verse number 32. The King James Version of the Bible today, um, these are the words that you should find there, and they're, they're in King James Version just because that's a familiar presentation of this text. Joel chapter number two, beginning at verse number 28, you'll find these words. Cain, it shall come to pass afterward, somebody say afterward, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered for in the Mount Zion or in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. I want to look at this and uh, just two words I kind of want to center around today. We want to talk about God will. Two, two words, God will. And, and I actually want to look at it as far as its ability to be presented in several ways. Um, you know, you got you to gotta realize there is a need and a necessity for the will of God in this season, in this day of so many wants in God. Yeah, a lot of will nots um, 
are presented in the day of God trying to do his will in this earth. And so you have the concept of God will, what we're talking today that deals with the actions that happen within the earth, the practices that God does um, within the earth, through the earth, if you will. Um, then you can look at God's will or God's will is actually the place in the earth, his place in the earth, his kingdom come, his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Um, you got God will, God will, that's an action, that's a practice, that's what he's doing even right now. God's will is his place within the earth. And then you can even have the presentation of God wills um, that deals with his purpose on the earth. That, that he can will a thing to be, and he will will a thing to be. His perfect will can come uh, and, and supersede what is known as his permissive will, that God will have his divine purpose within the earth so that we might be able to see his glory in the end. But the text today is helping us to understand actually the will of God and understand that God will. What will he do? He will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even think. Please understand that the presentation of Joel or Joel, depends on who you're listening to say it, the, the, the prophecy of Joel actually comes to prepare the people, the children of God, for the desolation that's going to come. Chapter number one has taught us that there's going to be desolation to come because of the locust and the, you know, the, uh, the worms and the, um, you know, all of these creatures that's going to come and eat up and devour everything that's, that's within the land. He gives a further presentation of that as we open up chapter number two in verses one through 11. I think we looked at that, kind of read that um, last week. Um, that he, it's a, it's a greater reiterance of the presentation that um, these, these destructive agents are going to come and they're going to mess up the land as we know it. And we're going to have to deal with a lot of hazards because of what is coming uh, down the road. And so Joel is uh, giving the prophecy to prepare the people, get yourself together, uh, telling them what to do. I've, I've taught us time and time again that, you know, when prophecy comes to us, when a prophet comes with a prophecy, the prophecy should not declare doom if it does not give you some type of way to get delivered in the midst of the doom or even from the doom. In other words, there ought to be a there ought to be some type of direction for us when we have to deal with these doom filled prophecies. That's, that's Joel's presentation where he says, yeah, I got some bad news for you, but I do want you to understand what God is going to do in the midst of it. That's the presentation of chapter number two, where you see in verses one through 11, there's that further description. Somebody say description. There's that further description of the terrible desolation uh, that is going to be made within the land of Judah with the locusts and the caterpillars and these worms and so forth. Verse 1 through 11, chapter number 2, deals with that in a more uh, distinct way and uh, reminds us of what is coming down the road. But along with the number one description of what's going to happen, he also says that there is a prescription on how you can deal with it when it comes. Um, verses 12 through 17, and I actually started to tag that text and take that text and deal with it just a little bit. But um, let's look at it and just read it for understanding's sake, because there is a prescription on what it is that we ought to do when we're having to deal with the description of what is coming that might be desolate within its presentation. Um, verse number 12 
still in the King James Version of the Bible, verse number 12 says, therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart, tear your heart um, and not your garments. All right, get to the place to where you T-E-A-R your heart. And, and please understand that that idea of tear, T-E-A-R or tear is tear and tear is tear. Tears come for betterment. Tears come or tears can even come for betterment within the midst of our lives. The text says in verse number 13 that he commands unto us to get to the place to where you tear your heart, rend your heart. Can I suggest to you again that Proverbs chapter number four, I believe it is, verse number 23 says that you ought to guard your heart with all diligence because out of the heart comes the issues of life. How does something come out of the heart if there is no tear, if there is no rending, if there is no renting, if there is no, if there's no tear or no tears for release? You know, I talked about it earlier today, um, filling in um, there at the Rima Church of how it is, you know, Paul Morton used to sing a song um, that says, your tears are uh, just a temporary relief and release of what God has um, has on the inside of you of your pain and your sorrow and your grief. It's just it's just a relief, so you can get that stuff out of you. The Scripture tells us that we have to rend our heart so that we might be able to let that which is in come out. And I would dare say that it's open heart surgery to the extent to where we can allow God to put in what he wants to put in while we allow him to take out what he wants to take out. Here's what the text says in verse number 13. He says, rend your heart and not your garments. It's not always about an exterior look. The problem with a lot of us and the problem with the presentation of a lot of us is that we're too busy trying to make exterior alterations so that we might be able to see internal renovations. And that's not the case. That's not always going to happen. You cannot just alter things in the exterior of you without dealing with the internal part of you to, to get renovated. If you want restoration, if you want renovation, if you want blessing in the midst of your in the midst of your life, you can't just fix your exterior. You can't just cut your hair, press your hair, curl your hair, uh, put on some makeup. Um, uh, you can't get all of the physical uh, surgery. Uh, um, you know, just trying to make everything on the exterior look right within your body and your inside is still jacked up. You cannot have exterior alterations and don't make internal renovations. Please understand, as I told you all last week, that the whole presentation of this particular chapter tells us that tribulation is just part of it. In the midst of tribulation, it should lead into these, these verses that we're looking at even right now. It should lead to humiliation. Tribulation can lead to humiliation, which ultimately will thrust us into restoration. God gives us the description um, of, of tribulation, of the tribulation verse, you know, first 11 verses in this chapter. He gives us the description uh, of, of what is going to come, the tribulation, uh, the, the, the stuff, the trouble that's going to happen in the midst of our lives. He gives us that description, but then he gives the prescription is that we should humble ourselves down, be allow ourselves to be humiliated, to, um, to be humbled in the midst of our presentation so that we can receive the prescription to actually rend our hearts, tear our hearts, allow the tears of our hearts to come forth so that we might be able to gain relief and release. Rend your heart. Y'all still with me in the text? 
Verse number 13, rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. He's slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet. There it is again that you saw in verse number one. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Here's the prescription on what it is that you should be doing, what you ought to take, how you ought to act. You know, we're in this season, in this day of the Lenten season, and uh, this is what you ought to be doing in the midst of this time of devotion where you can act within this discipline of devotion to your God. He says literally to us, sanctify a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and even those that suck the breast, that, that's the youth and the children, the youth and the infants, everybody bring them and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord, verse number 17, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach. Call everybody together, get them together, call out to God, cry out to God, pray to God. Here's a prescription. Um, beg of God, plead of God, and say, God, uh, uh, don't allow this thing, this destruction, this desolation, defeat us and destroy us. Uh, cry out to God. Let God see your heart. Let God feel your heart. Let God know that you are not just here trying to get by um, as, you know, with the ease of the day of people around you, but recognize that you have a responsibility to go higher within the will of God, to do greater within the will of God, and God is looking for you to live up to that responsibility and go beyond even the prophecy of doom and destruction and desolation that may be coming in the midst of our lives. We've had to deal with the actual presentation and sometimes the persona of uh, of this desolation and this the deal and the doom and stuff that we have to go through. We've had to deal with that even in the days that we're living in right now. God has prescribed on what it is that we ought to do, um, and I wanna I wanna just kind of put all of that in a clump and say we've got to get closer to God. We've got to allow ourselves to get to the point to where we we wrap our arms around him and don't let him go. Let him deposit into us what he wants to deposit into us. Let him do with us what he wants to do with us. Let him say through us what he wants to say uh, through us and then watch God get the glory because of it. Because if your whole presentation is not so God can get glory, then you might as well toss it all together. Recognize God is trying his best to do something great in the midst of our lives by letting us know some destruction is coming, some desolation is coming, some doom is coming in the midst of your life. He's letting us know that. And he says, when it comes, don't let it defeat you, but get closer to God. Get, you know, get the fast together, get the people together, uh, celebrate God. Um, gather together and worship him, gather together and serve him, gather together and bless him because he definitely is worthy of it. So you've got, you got the description. God gives us the description in the first 11 verses. And he says, you know, tribulation is going to come. Desolation is going to come. You're going to have some issues. You're going to have some stuff that's happening. It's going to really be devastating in the midst of your life. But I've got a prescription for you, verses 12 through 17. I've got a prescription for you um, that you need to do. Just get closer to God and watch God manifest his power and his strength to carry you through the season. But then he goes on a little bit further and he says, you got a description, you got a prescription. He says, but I need you to understand that I can cause remission. 
Mm -hmm. I can cause, I can cause remission. What's he talking about when he talks about remission? He's talking about the cancellation of your debt and charge uh, penalty. He's actually talking about um, the, the diluting, if you will, of the seriousness or the intense and uh, the intensity of disease and pain. Uh, it's a temporary recovery um, it, while you're going through it. You know, you can actually have the pain and you can actually have the suffering without enduring it. I mean, you can you can be in the midst of it and still have a peace that passes all understanding. Everybody sees you. You're supposed to be in anguish. You're supposed to be in pain. But God has you at the point to where, yes, the time of dissolution is there. The time of doom is there. The time of sickness is there. But you are in, hallelujah, remission to this extent, where verses 18 through verse 27 tells us that God says, I'm going to remove the judgment in the midst of, you know, we, we carry on, we're in this day now where we don't want to be judged. Don't judge me. Don't about judge. God says, if you, if you get wrapped up in me and my will and my way and my law, he says, I'll remove judgment. I'll remove anybody from judging you. I, I, I won't even let it come to you. You can get over that. And I think somebody can testify that the closer you get to God, the more the way people judge you, it doesn't influence you in it at all. Uh, you're not worried about it one bit. Um, because you know that God has a way of removing that spirit or that feeling away from you. He'll remove and then he will repair. Hallelujah. I'm getting happy thinking about it. He will remove and then he will repair. And then he will, according to the scripture, restore. Mm -hmm. He's going to remove the judgment. He's going to repair the breaches. Um, that have been made because of the stuff that we've had to go through. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking for the repairing of the breach. I'm looking for the repairing of what has been uh, messed up in, in the midst of our lives. I'm looking for him to repair and I'm looking for him to restore his power within the earth and the understanding not just his power, but to restore the understanding of his power within his people. Can I tell somebody that God still knows what he's doing? God is still in control. He is still working things out out on our behalf. And I'm glad about it. You ought to tell somebody else, and I'm glad about it too, that God has a way of removing, repairing, and he will restore us so that even though we're in the midst of all of this season and this situation, these circumstances, he has us at the point of remission. He's given the prescription. He's given the description. He's given the, he's given us remission, the understanding of remission, so that he might be able, watch this, to make a prediction. Okay. So you get, you got it. You got it. You got the bulk of the message so far that, that, that he's, he, he, he's showing us the description. He's uh, giving us a prescription. He is uh, causing us to notice remission so that he might be able to make a bold prediction. He's making a bold prediction at verse number 28 through verse number 32 that was read within your hearing that he speaks to us and he says very seriously and very plainly, he says, I'm going to do what I want to do, how I want to do it, and use whoever I want to use to get it done. And you really don't have any authority in the matter. You cannot change the mind of God to make him uh, to make him get to the place the way he's going to back up off of his perfect will within the earth. After you go through what you're going through and after you deal with what you have to deal with, God says, you're going to be open to me doing exactly what it is that I want to do in the midst of life as we know it.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why he says that it may it, it may have to come afterward. It may have to come after the last days, in the last days. You know, the, the text says in another instance that 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 after uh, we see some things that's going to happen within our lives, after we go through what we go through within our lives, God's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And please understand the verse number 28 is not just a verification of women ought to preach, but 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 please understand the verse number 28 is really speaking to God's authority in the land concerning the spirit of man, that he wants to get beyond us trying to do things ourselves and have it our own way and, and say it our own way and act our own way. He wants to get beyond all of that enough to recognize that if I allow my spirit and if you allow my spirit to come on the inside of you, you will be able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you may be able to ask or even think. God will pour out his spirit once we get through some stuff, once we see, and you, it, it ought not take too much for you to understand the power of God and, and what God really wants to do in the midst of your life. He says, once you have enough of stuff happening within your life and go through all of this stuff that you have to deal with, he says, I'll be able then to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, that everybody will be able to experience the power power of the spirit of God to where we might be able to say what it is that he wants said and do what it is that he wants done and act in the way that he wants uh, to act and go where he wants us to go and be what he wants us to be. He will pour out his spirit upon all flesh and sons and daughters will be able to prophesy. Old men are going to dream dreams. Young men are going to, to, to see vision and also upon the serpent the servants, I'm sorry, upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I'm going to pour out my spirit on everybody so everybody can be blessed. Now, what he gives us to understand is that I've given you this description. I've given you this prescription. I've, I've put you in remission so that I might be able to make a prediction that after it's over, I'm done. I'm, I, I feel something tugging on me right here. But after it's over, you're going to experience the spirit of the Lord in a great and a marvelous way. Is there anybody in here that can testify that when you let go and you let God and you trust God in the midst of everything that you're dealing with and everything that you're going through and everything that you can't handle now, when you get to the other side of through, is there anybody in here that can testify that God will do a new thing, that God will let his spirit reign in the earth, that God will see you through, that God will heal your body, that God will take care of your family, that God will uh, pick you up, turn you around, God will put money in your pocket, God will put a roof over your head, thank God for all of us, after the these two and a half years or so that we've been dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Michael in Bay County. Thank God that his, his, his power and his authority and his spirit is still reigning in our earth the way he's putting roofs back over our heads and he's replenishing us and he's restoring us back to a, a better place than we were uh, before the hurricane came, before the pandemic came. He is doing that God will in the midst of our lives. He will let his spirit penetrate the earth so that each and every one of us might be able to walk in the spirit, live according to his will, live according to his way, live according to his word. My Bible tells me that he will pour out his spirit.
He will bless us in a way that you've never seen blessing before. He will turn situations around. You know, the old, the old language of the church says he'll pick you up, turn you around, place your feet on solid ground. He will do that even today. That ain't just for the old church. That's for us even right now. He will manifest his presence in this earth. And I'm glad about that. Is there anybody else that can shout with me right there? That I'm glad that the Lord is still in the blessing business of doing his will in the earth. His will is his word and his word is his will. And he's doing his word by his spirit. You know, the word of the Lord is a two-edged sword. It's a you know, his, his the, the spirit of the of the of the Lord is through his word. It's through uh, the word that is his will and his will is his word. And as his will is his word and his word is his will, he carries that out by allowing his spirit to reign within the earth. And I don't know how y'all feel about it. I'm glad that his spirit is still reigning. He is still God. I don't care what kind of hell we go through. I don't care what we have to deal with. I don't care about the changes that's going on within our lives. God is still God. And we thank him for being our God. And we trust him to be our God so that his will in the earth can be done. To God be the glory. I'm thankful for his power and his presence enough to teach us he will. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He will. He will. He will do whatever we need him to do when we need him to do it, how he wants to do it. But he's not going to yield to anybody else's will. His perfect will is going to be done in this earth. In the end, we're all going to win because God's will will be done. Pray something's been said, something's been done to help you today. As you try your best to press your way on through these perilous and troublesome times, there's somebody that has been under the sound of everything that we've done today, and the Lord has pricked your heart to the extent to where you want to surrender to his will and surrender to his way, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, that's what Romans 10 says, then you can be saved. You want to be saved today, put it in the comments and say, I'm coming to Jesus just as I am. I'm surrendering to his will. I'm surrendering to his way. If you're here and you're looking for a church home, you want to be a part of this joyous church that we love so much, this joyous St. John Baptist Church. If you want to be a part of our church, put it in the comments and say, I'm joining the church today. I'm joining St. John. I'm becoming a joy. And Delwyn Williams is my pastor. I would love to be your pastor. And the, all of the joys would love to be your sisters and brothers in the Lord. And, and as you learn and grow within a wonderful church, you can unite with us. Put in the comments, we'll make sure that someone gets in contact with you so that you might be able to complete your walk and your journey um, as a, uh, within the body of Christ. If you straight away and you want to recommit, put it, put that in the comments. Put that in the comments and say, I want to recommit to the cause of Christ. I want to recommit to the will of God. I want to recommit to what he wants done within my life. I was there, I strayed away. I'll admit it, I strayed away. I gave up along the journey. But I'm convicted by the word of God today, enough to come on back just as I am without one plea and that and recognize that his blood was shed for me and that he is bidding me to come to thee. Since he's bidding me to come to thee, I come, O Lamb of God, I come. If you are here today and you want to unite with our church in any one of those ways, we will welcome you. Put it in the comments and we will receive you just as you are. Also, uh, if you've been blessed by the opportunities that we've had today, I want to encourage each of you to give to the glory of God. I want you to give to the glory of God. I wish I had pulled that up. I do have that uh, presentation that we used to pull up right there, and I, I forgot to pull it up before we got started. Uh, but you can give to the glory of God through the Givelify app. You can give through the Givelify app or um, you can give through the live stream page uh, at holyconnection.tv through uh, our website at stjohnpc.org and you can 
click the donate button and you can give in that way. You can uh, give uh, by sending in your envelope, send in your good check to post office box 227, Panama City, Florida, 32402. And that way you can give. Take care of your responsibility as a dutiful disciple of the St. John Church and surrender your tithe and your offerings to your God through the fellowship that you decided that you would unite with. We would love to uh, make sure that you are constantly, consistently growing within the will of the Lord by your obedience, even in giving and your steadfast service to the will of God through the church of God that God has connected you to. Um, uh, let's see. And I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Since we're not at the church today, um, um, there's no one there to receive it in the natural and the physical for you today. Um, but I think all of those other three ways is sufficient enough for us to give to the glory of God. Do your very, very best in your giving and make sure that you surrender to what God is calling for from his people in these last and evil days. I love y'all. Appreciate you all so very, very much for being here. I, uh, I want to I wanna bless your gifts. I want to bless you. And then we will sing out um, in our usual fashion. And uh, we'll call it a day for today. We will come back. I'll see y'all Wednesday um, for our uh, midweek session. Okay. Wednesday at noon and then six o'clock Wednesday night um, for the prayer session. And you can call into that. Um, but that's going to be our schedule for this week. And uh, as I told you, um, we are we are uh, we're, we're we're on a sabbatical from the physical edifice of the St. John Church right now uh, for this week. All right. Everything is going to be done virtually and virtually only. So do your very, very best in that matter, to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord and realize that your labor is not in vain. Do not give up on God. God has not given up on you, but trust him through it all and he'll make a way. He'll see you through it. I promise you he will. Just don't give up on it. All right. Get your gifts and how it is that you're going to give, put it in your hand and uh, let's bless our gifts together. Dear God, I thank you for the opportunity to bless you for blessing me. In the name of Jesus, receive my gift. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And I thank you because of my obedience. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. And I expect a great harvest in Jesus' name. Now the Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you, and the Lord grant you his peace. Tonight, tomorrow, next week, henceforth, even forevermore, until we gather together again to worship our God in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, it is so. And all the people of God said, amen. Blessings on you, beloved. I love y'all. I'll see y'all the next time. And you all have a wonderful day in the will and the way of our God. Peace and blessings on you.